Today we're looking at the Polston 20mm quad anti-aircraft gun. Quite a unique little exhibit that we have within the museum. So the Polston gun started off in design in about well, late 30s, 1939 by the Polish. When Germany invaded Poland, they grabbed all the designs and took it to England. Then the designs were further finished by a mixture of Polish, Czech and English designers. What the Polish wanted to do was redesign the gun to make it simpler and cheaper to manufacture than the Ehrlichen 20mm cannon. So the name Polston could have a couple of different origins. The Pole, Polish, Sten being the, uh, the Sten company, Shepard, Turpin and Enfield. Enfield being the manufacturer is from the Royal Small Arms Factory in Enfield. So they're actually the manufacturer. Sten could be part of the design crew when they brought the plans to the UK. So the parts on this gun are reduced by about 47%. So they go from about 250 parts for the Ehrlichen to 119 parts, so a lot easier to manufacture. The cost of these guns reduced dramatically. Talking about uh, 350 pound for an Ehrlichen and anywhere between 60 to 70 pounds for the Polston 20 millimeter cannon. So it started production in late 1939, so about the first 240 come off the production line, and then into 1944, they built about 13,700 of the guns. It works from an open breech configuration, so it has what we call advanced primer ignition. So this is where as the bolt is traveling forward, it picks up the round, and then as the round is being chambered, it is then fired. That allows us to make the bolt lighter, which aids in recoil. Drum magazines, very similar to what was on the Ehrlichen gun. It uses the same ammunition, high explosive incendiary tracer, along with AP. So these drums contain 60 rounds. You can also fit a box style magazine, which is 30 rounds. So you have a crew of four that maintains or loads the, uh, the ammunition onto the gun. Each one of these drums, when full, weighs 29 kilos. So each round weighs about 225 grams. And if we look at these in Australian service, well the factory was approved to start off in July 43, but they obviously didn't get built till 44, so from about 44 onwards, Australia built these guns under the code name of A75. We ordered about 8,000 of these, but by war's end only 1,500 were produced. When we look at the rate of fire for this particular gun, it's about 450 uh, rounds per minute. In Australian use to fire sustain, they were looking at about 250 to 320 rounds per minute. A muzzle velocity of uh, about 830 metres per second. So this gives it a maximum extreme range of about 2,000 to 2,200 metres, but an effective range of about 1,000 metres. So this was good for low-flying aircraft or V1 uh, flying bombs uh, over the, uh, the English coast. So essentially a really good gun that provides a good rate of fire. This quad in particular was built by John Inglis out of Toronto in Canada. They were said to build a little over 500 of these quad mounts, but this serial number is 767. So the numbers were essentially quite high. That company wanted to build their own 20 millimeter cannons from about 1942, because the Brits gave them approval to do it. But when they redesigned the gun, it got to about 1944. The British again changed their ammunition types. And so these guns were actually shipped to John Inglis to put in their quad mount. All controlled from here, it's all hydraulically driven. So he has his controls. So he's got the firing switches and essentially he's got his little palm switches here. So this controls both uh, elevation and travis. But in the elevation, we can go to negative five degrees below horizontal, but we can also go up to plus 80 degrees uh, in elevation. On the right hand side here is his electrical panel. He's got all these switches here, all the circuit breakers, and he can start the engine from this position uh, and this provides all his power to this configuration. In the back, this is our power source. So this is a 6.2 horsepower TKN Wisconsin single cylinder petrol engine. So this is where it provides all the power. So we have the, the fuel tank underneath. We have an oil reservoir up the top for the hydraulics and a six volt battery. Is there a way to operate this manually, Jason? No, this is all hydraulic. So you've got to have the engine running uh, to provide power to the hydraulics to be able to use this uh, gun in action. You have your stabilizing stand, so you can actually level it off. It has your spirit levels just here. So you can leave it on the trailer using some dunnage for the, uh, the stands, or you can lower it off the trailer and remove the trailer completely so the whole quad mount is on the ground. Complete in its weight, it's uh, just over 3,100 kilos. 
and each gun weighs about 57 kilos. So this is your vein sight, uh, what you'd see are most anti-aircraft guns. The gunner can line up his blade sight looking through this part here, this optical, and be able to track a moving target. So if you'd like to uh, see more of this type of exhibit, or if you've got any suggestions of what you think we should cover within the museum, please put your ideas in the comments below.